Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and this is the ninth episode of uh, the cable show known as Our Brockton. And again, the title speaks for itself. It's our Brockton. It's our community. It's our home. And it's really my honor and privilege to have uh, Superintendent Mike Thomas on today. And Mike uh, grew up here in the City of Champions, uh, graduate of Brockton High School, wonderful leader for Brockton Public Schools. Mike, thanks for being here. Thank you, Mayor. Pleasure being here with you. So you and I, I think we talk uh, a couple times a day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what? number one thing always uh, is the safety of our boys and girls students, our educators, our staff. Yeah. And with COVID, Mike, it's, it's off the charts. But before we get into that, do you mind? I mean, everybody knows Mike Thomas, yeah. Superintendent Thomas, but why don't you just tell some of some of the uh, some of the viewers uh, about you? So um, I born and raised Brockton East Side. I graduated '87, Brockton High School. I've been in the school system um, for 28 years, and I've been superintendent. Well, this is my second year superintendent. I was deputy superintendent before that for six years, and then again I taught yeah. for 10 years, and I spent uh, several years at the high school and as an administrator, department head, uh, assistant dean, dean, uh, under Sousa Akowitz. So, no, it's been, it's been a pleasure working for the Brockton Public yeah, Schools. I mean, you've really, you've, 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 you come up through the ranks, Mike, and I'll say one thing. I mean, I've known you, so we went to high school together, yeah. and, and uh, you know, as a city council, you, you don't interact that much with the superintendent as a mayor. You do it all the time. And now you and I, uh, I mean, as mayor, I chair the school committee. Uh, vice chair is Mark D'Agostino. We have great elected, mm -hmm. seven elected school committee members. But... The thing that you and I have to talk about every single day is COVID, yep. COVID, COVID, coronavirus. Of course, we're 100% remote right now. And, yep. uh, why don't you just uh, tell everybody, Mike, like wh how we're doing, what we're doing, and, and what's the daily uh, activities relative to COVID in Brockton Public Schools? Yeah, so yeah, first I want to you know, thank you, the mayor and city council, and especially the school committee, uh, and all you know, the employees of the Brockton Public Schools who've worked together during this tough times to, um, to pull us together and obviously switch us to remote learning without the support and relationships there are in the Brockton Public Schools from you know the executive team the school committee uh, and then our, 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 the, our union leaders uh, and all our teachers support staff um, it, it'd be we wouldn't be able to get through this um, again we we meet with Dr. Herman every other week the school committee to get updates on the metrics because uh, we're always looking, when can we bring kids back to school safely? Yep. Especially uh, uh, first would be our students uh, with disabilities, getting them back into the classroom. Because we all know that nothing can replace in-person learning. That's it's right. just there's no replacement for it, especially for our students with disabilities, for all students, but students with disabilities. Our pre-K to, to grade three and four students is really, it's a really tough situation uh, for them to learn on a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, we are obligated to follow the time on learning. So six, uh, six and a half hours is the obligation. Um, and that's a lot of time. It's a long time for a student to be on a computer and a long time for staff to be on computers. And we know how difficult it is for parents that have to work. Um, and some of our parents working two or three jobs and having this, uh, their children at home. So we understand how difficult it is, but again, our decisions are based on safety yes. uh, and health. Yes. Um, and we have to continue to do that, but in keeping in the back of our mind always, you know, actually in the forefront that, you know, with, when can we get kids back? We talk about it constantly. Um, and it's important uh, because we know how important it is to have kids learning in school. And, and you know, you and I, um, we're, we're both dads of, yep. of, of, of students, of, of, of younger children, and so we see it, yep. you know, we see it, we know it's, it's, it's a struggle, it's a challenge, it's oh, not yeah. normal, right? No. It's not normal. No. Um, but you mentioned two things, safety, 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 that's key. Yep. And I want to take a, a moment um, to thank Kim Gibson. Um, Kim, a graduate of Brockton High as well, 88, uh, in the class of 88, she's uh, president of the BEA, Brockton Education Association, and uh, between you and Kim, I want to thank everybody mm -hmm. because um, let me just share with you um, the type of uh, superintendent we have. When COVID came to Brockton, and at that time, the Board of Health was led by John McGarry, um, former city councilor, registered nurse, and John was filling in. And uh, John and I were trying to figure out, what do we do? We have one health nurse, one health nurse, Evelyn LeBron. Uh, I called Mike Thomas, called the superintendent, and without hesitation, Mike said, the school nurses will be able to help. Um, and again, school nurses are under the union, right? The union employees and Kim Gibson, and we worked it all out. And to this day, school nurses, and it's led by Linda Cahill, uh, who has a doctorate in nursing, director of, of school nursing, uh, helping the city save lives by doing the contact tracing. Mike, I want yeah. everybody to know that because you didn't have to say yes, but that just shows your leadership. 
um, collaborating, working together. And, and one thing that um, I guess if there's a silver lining, um, I guess you could say that of COVID, and I would say that it'd be hard to say a silver lining because mm. we've lost 305 yeah. people, but we are now a one-to-one -one school district. Yep. What does that mean? That means we purchased 12,000 computers to make sure that we were one-to-one. -one. Um, and that, that just is amazing. We actually used the CARES Act money, yes. but um, we were not even close to being a one-to-one -one district. Uh, and then the computers we had, a lot of them were, you know, were older, had to be swapped out. So now every student in the district has either only a one-year-old computer or a brand new computer. And that's for 16,000 students. And not only that, I just, and I want to make a plug for, we still have several MiFi devices that are available for families that are struggling with their internet access. Um, I think we have about 1,800 of them left. Okay. So we continue to put the word out. You know, if you need internet access, please let us know. Let your, your principal know at the school. I'll let the teacher know that your child's in class with every day on the computer, and we will make sure we get a MiFi uh, internet access MiFi to you. And that's important to know. So between the computers and the internet access we have available, I mean, again, with uh, how quickly we were able to mobilize with the support of you and the school committee and the CARES Act, with Aldo and Troy yes. working together, we were able to buy 12,000 computers and make us now a one-to-one -one district. And, and so when people hear 12,000, well, what does that mean? Well, that was over $7 million. Yeah. And on the 12th of November, this, this month, we're gonna get a check from Plymouth County uh, for the seven million. So we're getting reimbursed 100% for those laptops. It's, it's a game changer for yep. Brockton. Yep. Uh, you and I never would have thought we would have been a one-to-one -one no. school district. No. Um, but, but we are, and the other thing that I want people to know is what else you've been doing with, with your leadership team, with Dr. Jim Cobbs, with Ken Thompson from operations is um, air quality, yeah. air purifiers, because again, these schools, are, some of them are old, right? Some of them are old. Um, and so explain how you're addressing in building, even though the, the kids aren't there, um, but we have staff and educators there. What, what, what are you doing? Well, first, this, um, this past summer, we had all the, the buildings uh, tested for their air exchange rates. Not only did we do that, we, we had all schools tested for their air quality, mm -hmm. um, and which wasn't required. Uh, air, air exchange rates was required, but we figured let's go a step beyond yep. and have air quality tested as well. You know, that's for mold, carbon dioxide, that's, uh, you know, tests everything in mm -hmm. the building. And, um, you know, there were areas that we had to improve as far as ventilation because our buildings, some of our buildings are older. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way to increase uh, air, air flow was through air purifiers. So through the CARES Act, again, um, you know, Aldo was be able to work with Troy closely and Dr. Cobbs and, and the facilities team. To, so we were able to purchase 2,000 air purifiers uh, nice. that covers all classrooms, um, larger ones for gyms and cafeterias, and then smaller ones for... Um, for offices. Mm -hmm. So every school, every building, every classroom, every office, every cafeteria, kitchen, um, and gymnasium has uh, an air purifier That's in great. it. And again, that I think was close to, it had to be $2 million yeah. for that. And, yep. and if we didn't secure them early enough, because uh, you can't find them now, right. it's almost impo it's about a three to four month wait for air purifiers. And so, you know, it's just, jumping on things early to make sure we were getting things in our buildings quickly for, you know, for, you know, for, the, for the safety of the environment, you, yeah, know, and, you know, for our teachers and then when our students come uh, back. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's thinking outside the box, planning absolutely. ahead, um, building blocks for success. Yeah. One thing that was a success, and to this day people um, thank the school committee, thank you, uh, thank Dr. Rick Herman. And so Dr. Rick Herman, again, is the city's medical consultant. He's an MD. He used to be chief of ER at Brockton and chief of ER at Good Samaritan. And, I hired him in, in March, I think it was. Um, when, when Mike and I got together to figure out when we needed to close schools, we were actually ahead of other municipalities, ahead of the governor. Um, but one thing is the disappointment of the seniors last year. Um, they missed proms and um, sporting events yep. and drama and band. But one thing that you said to me, you came to me, and, and you never called me Bob, you said, Mayor, <laughs> we have to figure out an in-person graduation. School committee said the same thing. Yep. Uh, Dr. Herman and I and you went up to Marciano Stadium. We walked it. We visualized it. What happened? What happened? Did we so, do it? Yeah, we did it. We did it. We had to wait till late August or yeah. mid-August. Um, was it mid-August, yeah. I believe? Yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, it was very hot. Yeah, but it was. it was worth. It was worth sitting out there. I think we did six graduations. Yes. 
between it was a Friday, yep. a Saturday, Sunday, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. So, uh, and it was well worth it. I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I would sit there again in 95 degree heat for those kids Absolutely. and their families. Uh, we had a nice virtual graduation, yep. but that doesn't replace in person. No. Um, so, with the help of you, the school committee, Dr. Herman, uh, and then you know Dr. Murray. Um, Cindy Burns at the Alternative School, yeah. Dr. Cobbs at the Edison Academy, yeah. Jay Lander at the Huntington School. They were all able to have a graduation, in-person graduation ceremony. They did a ton of work with their staff, uh, to, with their staffs to get, you know, to get it planned. It wasn't easy to plan, no. uh, and the facilities department did a great job setting up the field so it was yeah. safe for everybody and sanitizing after each graduation. Yep. So again, it was, it was well worth it, and, and we needed to do it for the kids and their families. It was awesome. It was, it was awesome. Great. And I'll tell you, when you looked out in that crowd, every boy and girl that was about to graduate were wearing masks, yep. social distance. The crowds, you know, we were limited. We needed to limit it. Six feet social. Everything was done. We dotted the eyes. We crossed the teeth. Yep. It was great. It was, it was great. great. Yeah, it was um, great. You know, and, and one thing that um, I think the viewers need to know now is, you and me and Mr. D'Agostino in his capacity as vice chair and then the school committee, we're not going to go in person anymore. We're going to be doing Zoom yeah. city co uh, school committee meetings out of abundance of caution. Yeah. We always meet at the Rom Little Theater at Brockton High in the, in, you know, in the, in the Fine Arts Building. But um, people say, well, why are you doing that? Well, we're doing it to be safe and also setting an example, right? Because yeah. we, people look at us and how we do it. And again, because the numbers are spiking up right now, we need to take every precaution, right? And just reinforce the idea of social distance, wearing masks. Um, so what are your thoughts, Mike, as, as we go forward? We're going to continue to look at the metrics with yep. Dr. Herman. Absolutely. Right? You, you work with the Department of, uh, of Education, yep. right? You work with Commissioner Riley. You work with other superintendents. Um, what, what, what do you want to tell? We don't have that much more time, but what do you want to tell um, the parents, the guardians, the loved ones, and the students themselves on, on how your leadership style is? And because of COVID, What's the next couple months going to be, in your humble opinion? It might not happen, but what are your thoughts and your desires? So, I, again, we like to get kids back into school, but it, when, it's not, when it's safe. Um, and, I, I mean, and I want to make it clear, um, you know, things with the 12,000 computers, the Internet access, switching to remote learning, it's difficult. I mean, this, it's not all perfect. Oh. I understand. I've heard from parents. Yep. It's not ideal, absolutely not, and we get that. I yep. Believe me, I yep. fully get that. This is not, oh, everything's rosy, everything's wonderful, and every kid's online learning the way, it's just not the way learning nope. is supposed to happen. Right. It's really hard, this is the hottest teachers will ever have to yes. work. Yes. Uh, no one was trained to teach through a computer. Kids, were, kids are supposed to be in school yeah. learning, yeah. And, and parents are supposed to be you know, off at their days while their students, their kids are in, their children are in school. That's so right. it, this is not perfect. We know it's not perfect, yeah. um, but we're going to continue to do our best and we'll continue to look at the metrics and again, get, you know, you know, is when we're safe, we will get students back into school. And I also want to note before we end is that um, I'm, I am on a lot of calls with uh, the Commissioner of Education, Riley, and then I spend a lot of time talking to other superintendents, especially superintendents in urban districts. Yes. Um, and you know, we're lucky here to have the relationships between the school committee, our elected officials, the um, administrators, and, and just the teachers. Um, there's horror stories going on about, you know, things that are happening. And there's, there's, you know, unions butting heads mm -hmm. with administration and school committees. That doesn't happen here. No. Um, it's because, and I think it's because everybody we deal with, we all grew up here. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. Right. And, and everybody has a vested interest in Brockton kids and Brockton families. And, you know, we don't have that infighting that causes um, dissension, causes things not to happen. Uh, and I think we were able to switch quickly to remote learning and, and get a new learning management system and teachers have really stepped up and support staff and done a great job is because of the relationships. Yes. And that's not happening in other locations. Other I'm sure you hear that oh, from, from other mayors. I, I do, I do. Uh, and that doesn't happen. But again, going back to parents and my message, we know it's not easy. Right. And we understand this is not ideal. It's not perfect. Nope. Um, you know, and we're going to continue to do our best with remote learning and do our best to, when it's, when it's time, safely get students back into school. And, and, you know, that's a shared vision by all of us. And, and I think you hit it on the head. You know, Brockton's a unique, we're a city, right? Yeah. But we're almost a town in a sense that people grew up here, they know it. Um, the beautiful aspects of Brockton is its diversity, yep. right? So much different culture here. 
And one thing before we conclude is that, you know, Mike and I um, have been working diligently to provide emotional support as well. We all know the, the brutal murder of George Floyd. Um, Mike and I spoke uh, almost instantaneously to figure out how we're going to um, enact real change, real change. And so from the school side, you know, Mike's leadership, um, you know, we're doing unconscious bias training. Um, we're opening up the conversation. We're listening and learning. To be an effective school committee, uh, I mean, superintendent and school committee and city council and mayor, you have to listen and learn. Um, and one thing that Mike and I also are doing is, is every other Tuesday, Mike and all the Petronio from the schools and myself and Troy Claxton, who is the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, we have a standing Zoom with the three state reps and the state senator. So it's, it's Senator Mike Brady, it's uh, Representative Cronin, Representative Dubois, Representative Cassidy to talk about funding and you hear about Chapter 70. You also heard about the Student Opportunity Act. And before we conclude, we, we, we have to talk <laughs> yeah. about that real quickly. So after all these years, right, the Webby case, the McDuffie case, the Hancock case, all these cases where Brockton was being shortchanged financially, right, um, Student Opportunity Act looked like finally, right, we hit a grand slam. Yep. We're finally going to get that windfall of money and then COVID happened. Yep. But the fight's not over, right, Mike? No, no, we're still meeting with the urban... Uh, superintendents and the urban, you know, the mayors uh, yep. and their uh, chief financial officers and the attorneys. Yep. Uh, again, with the Student Opportunity Act, the funding formula changed, and um, we were about to get twenty million dollars more yep. and have about eleven million dollars to spend, which would, would would have been again programs for for students, uh, lower class size, just a lot of different things. We were able to start putting back. Hiring in, teachers. Hiring we got, how many were we going to? Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Yep. And yep. ten of those were adjustment, adjustment counselors, counselors to make sure students were getting the emotional support that they needed. Um, but again, COVID hit yep. and, and the rug was pulled out. But so now we'll continue to talk about a possible lawsuit to see you know what happens over yep. the especially next fiscal year. Um, but that's still now on the front burner again. And the fight will continue. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and, and so it's, it's really been my honor. And it's my honor and privilege to work with, with Superintendent Thomas every single day. Uh, what you see is what you get. Mike's an unbelievable leader. It's the leader that we need on the Brockton Public Schools right now. And I want to thank the, the superintendent for his time today and his administration staff. And, of course, the teachers, the educators, and the school committee. Uh, but it also runs the gamut from the custodians to the cafeteria workers to the, to the, to the paraprofessionals to the public safety officials up at Brockton High School that protect our schools as well. So uh, it really has been my honor to have as a guest, uh, superintendent of the schools for Brockton Public Schools, Mike Thomas. This is the ninth episode of Our Brockton. Our 10th episode will be filmed next week. It's gonna be a special episode. Uh, it's gonna be a Q&A type of uh, session to talk about uh, different things that are happening now in the city of Champions, the city of Brockton, the place that we call home. So be well, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. And thanks again, Mike. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you.